Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. In this video, I'm going to give you a rundown of my smart home theater lighting setup. I use LifeX as the platform and Plex as my media player to do functions such as dim the lights when the movie's playing and bring the lights back up when the movie's paused. But first, if you like the video, please drop a like on it as it really helps me out. Consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so that you'll be notified when I upload the next video. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the video. I received a lot of comments and messages from people asking how I did my lighting setup from my last video. So as requested in this video, I'm going to break it all down and give you some inspiration for your own home theater setup. Now, the beauty of this is that it doesn't matter if you have a small setup of literally just a TV or a mini home theater like mine, which has two or three rows of seating or a large theater that has several rows of seating. This setup and product lineup is scalable to suit no matter what the size. Now the platform that I used was LifeX. I had some experience with other smart lights, but to me LifeX is simply the best hands down. The quality of the lights, brightness and the accuracy is in my opinion second to none. And the fact that each light has its own Wi-Fi module means I don't have to spend extra on a lighting hub. So first of all, I'll give you a breakdown of the lights I chose for the room and why. I picked six GU10 downlight bulbs, which I put into a really nice downlight fixture, which has a rim around it to give a spotlight type feel reminiscent of a movie set. I wanted these so that it would be easy to have distinctive lighting, not blending with each other, and the effect worked exactly how I wanted it. I'll leave links in the description to both the downlights and the LifeX lights, so be sure to check those out if you're interested. Now that I had the perimeter lighting sorted, I wanted a strip of light at the step, as having a step in a dark room when all the lights are off is a real trip hazard. For this I purchased a LifeX Z-Strip starter pack and three additional Z-Strip extensions to span the 3.6 meter distance. As much as it pained me to cut such an expensive light strip, I had to to make it fit within the span. I also purchased some angle profiles with a diffuser cover, cut them down to size and screwed them into the step tread. Ultimately, my next upgrade will be to have a step tread profile that will go across the top of the step and the lights will be angled down. But due to the cost of that, which was over a thousand dollars, I decided to go with a much cheaper option and for now, this will do. Next, I wanted some ambient light at the front of the theater and although the cabinet at the front is purely decorative, it allowed me to cover some of the excess power points and also install a one meter life XZ strip under it. This light gives a nice glow to the room when you walk past it and it's really nice. Now, although the recliners have built-in LEDs, unfortunately, they are statically set to blue. I really wanted some additional lighting under the chairs, so I purchased another LifeX Z-Strip with an additional extension piece and stuck it under the rear recliner. This one gives a really nice ambience to the room and is controlled through the LifeX app rather than the button on the chair. So once all my lights were installed and paired with the LifeX app, I started to make some color profiles so that depending on the mood I'm in or function of the theater, there were dedicated profiles I could activate at the push of a button or through Apple HomeKit or Google Smart Home, as I have both going in my home at the moment. As you can see, I have a number of nice color profiles or scenes as they are called by the LifeX app to suit a number of moods and scenarios. So while it's nice to have a smart lighting setup in the theater that can be controlled by voice command or through the phone, what would be even better is just to have the lights come on and off depending on what you're doing, whether you're chilling in there or watching something. This brings me to the setup of the integration between Plex and LifeX. Now in this setup, at the moment it's just Plex, but you can use any number of media player systems that will integrate with the LifeX API. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to see any other integration options. Right, now to get the lights to dim when you play a movie or fade back in when you pause, you'll need a couple of things. One, you'll need your LifeX lights connected and online. You'll need a computer, a server or a virtual instance that is on the same network as both your LifeX lights and also your Plex Media server. That also needs to have Python version 2.7 library installed or higher running on it. Next, you'll need a Plex server with all of the ports required for the setup to be accessible. I'll explain that part a little bit later. You'll also need the Python script, which will be listening to the requests coming in from the Plex Media server. Now this may seem a bit confusing, so I'm not going to suggest that this is for the faint of heart. Everyone's setup and hardware will be different, so you may need to adapt things to suit your setup. For my setup, I'm using a Synology NAS DS1817 Plus and 24TB of storage after the RAID has been set up. 
I have both Plex Media Server and Python libraries running on the server, so it would make sense that I install everything onto the NAS directly. Bear in mind that you can do this with a Windows PC or Linux or a Mac or any other type of device that you can run Python scripts on. I've left links in the description to the script itself so that the first thing you need to do is download all of the files and put them onto your server that is running Python. You will need to install the following libraries, Flask, Color Thief, NumPy and Pyfex. You can install these directly and on my Synology NAS I putty into the terminal using SSH and run commands to install them. I had to use the sudo command in front of each of these installation options to elevate the permissions to allow these libraries to be installed. I'm not going to put here exactly how to do it for every single platform as it's just there's way too many, but I'm showing you what most of the Linux systems would need. Once you have all of the libraries installed, you can park the terminal for a moment and switch over to the configuration file to set up the integration. I use my Windows PC for the next part because it's far easier to edit config files in Notepad than through the terminal window. Open up the share and edit the config.ini file. Now although there may be a bunch of options already there, these are the ones that I use to configure mine. The first one is Logger. Especially in the beginning, you may want to capture logs of the interaction between Plex and the script that runs the lights. So put a path that is accessible by the script. The next one is server. This is the flask port on the server. By default, it's 5000, but feel free to change it to a custom port that you know is free. Mine is set to 510 at the time of filming. The next option is Plex. And under this one, the first one is ignore player UUIDs. Now I have four Apple TVs in my house, all running Plex. So that the lights are only controlled by the player in the home theater, you will need to add the UUIDs or unique identifiers of each of the Plex players on your local network to avoid having the lights turn off and on by other Plex players. I found that out the hard way when watching movies in my bedroom, all of a sudden I'd see all the lights go on downstairs. To get the UUID is really easy, all you need to do is open up a web browser and type in the address listed here. You'll need to be logged into your Plex Media Server to see the XML that is generated. You'll then need to find the client identifier string for each of the players that you see and don't want to interact with the lights. Next we move on to the LifeX configuration of the script. Follow the steps here as you can see on my screen. There is a link in the description for how to obtain your LifeX API key. Next, put your brightness settings in. I put mine to 0.05 as even 0.1 was pretty bright and one is set to full brightness and not really appropriate when you're watching a movie. This setting specifically is the brightness of the lights during playback, so you might want to tweak this a little bit till you get it right. Next is duration and that relates to the time you'd like between the beginning of play and when the lights start to dim. I have it set to one second as it feels nice to start playing and then dim. Num colors refers to the sample of colors that the script will extrapolate from the Plex thumbnail. Essentially, what the script does is program the lights with the colors from the movie thumbnail. For example, the movie Mission Impossible has red in it, so it will pull some red from the thumbnail and spread it across the lights depending on how many lights you have. Quality refers to how intensely it scans the thumbnail. The higher the value, the longer it will take to process and will potentially lag your lights turning on. Next what you'll need to do is create two themes on your LifeX app, the default pause theme and the default playback theme. Make sure that you assign the name exactly how you spelt it in the Plex app. The last option is lights, and this one refers to the lights you want to activate during playback. As an example, I don't want all of my lights from my bulkhead to be on during the movie. No matter how dim I make them, they just detract from the viewing experience. I only included the Z-strip lights and set them as dim as possible and I found that this is the best possible setting. Next, save the config.ini file and go back to your terminal window. Run the script by typing in python plex lifex.py and you should see the script run. 
Next, go into your Plex server setup, go into settings and then click webhooks and add the URL that the script is running on. Make sure that the port matches the one that you chose in your config.ini file. Now open up the player in your home theater room and press pause and play. You should see the event pop up in the terminal window and if you've done it correctly you should see events logged in the window and your lights should activate. If the effect isn't quite what you are after, you'll need to stop the script by running the pkill-f plex lifex.py command in the terminal window which will stop the script from running. Make the changes back in the config.ini file, make sure you save it and then go back to the terminal window and then run the script again using python plex lifex.py and then test. Rinse and repeat until you are happy with the result. Now you will want to make sure that this script always runs and the only way to do that is with a scheduled task. Unless you plan to run the script manually each time you restart the Plex server, I would recommend doing this. It's easy to do on Windows, just look for the task scheduler and add the task in. Google is your friend here if you need to find out how to add a scheduled task. On my Synology NAS, I go into the task scheduler and add the various options needed to make sure the script runs in the event of a failure or restart. As you can see, it works really nicely and feels like a real movie theater experience. The best part is when you pause the movie and the lights come back on so that you can see what you are doing and then simply dim again when you hit play. Righto guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment down below if you plan on going through with trying this setup yourself. I do read every single comment, so if you get stuck, drop a comment down below and I will try my best to help you out. If you like the video, please drop a like on it as it really helps me out. Consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so that you'll be notified when I upload the next video. Now, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone that has supported the channel so far. In my last video where I gave a rundown of my home theater setup, I was completely blown away by the response. I never expected it. At the time of filming, I've had over 12,000 views on the video, which may not seem like a lot to you guys who are used to watching tons of these videos, but for someone that's only made five videos, I was just completely blown away by it. I never expected that anyone was even going to see it. So I'd really like to thank you sincerely. I'm just completely blown away. It has inspired me to make more videos, which is why I made this video, because a lot of the questions and suggestions that I had in the comment section from my previous video was to make a video on my home theater lighting. So that's why I've done, I've done my best. So I hope it makes sense. I hope you guys are able to follow it. If I didn't, please let me know what I can do better and I'll be sure to try to improve. But that's it for now. I'd really like to thank you once again for watching the video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.